Ladies and gentlemen, Executive Vice President of the Trump Organization and host of Triggered with Don Jr. on Rumble, please welcome Donald Trump Jr. So a little surprise for all of you. Uh, check under your seats. If there happens to be a gold chocolate bar underneath there, that's a VIP, oh, I'm not joking. That's a VIP ticket to my father's reception tomorrow at CPAC. Because your president, President Donald Trump, will be here. He's not out raising money. Uh, from the billionaire Chinese sympathists like others, you know? Matt, they're gonna do that. Well, others didn't show. I was like, yeah, they're raising money from the people who don't necessarily believe in America first, but because they need their money. So who's got gold bars? There's one. Another, I, you're a lucky man, sir. Any more? They may do some more. There, look at that, another one there. Well, I think you guys will have an awesome time. Yep. There's people gaming the system. What are you, Democrats? You're trying to get under other seats? They're, they're ballot harvesting, Matt. By the way, my political speech for the day, if we don't start doing the same thing the Democrats do, none of it matters. All right, remember that. Like, we have to be ballot harvesting for the first time Perhaps ever, we're actually winning on the issues, but we can't implement all of the things that we want, like the logical things like same-day voting, paper ballots, ID checks. Like, even the socialists in Europe are like, you seriously don't have those things? Like, they're left of some of the lunatics on the left here, and they're shocked that we don't. But guess what? While we want all those things as Republicans, we'll never get them if we don't actually play the game. Right? The left has weaponized COVID. They weaponized the pandemic to change the playing field. And guess what? We can't implement the things that we want if we're not in control. So in the meantime, until we take over those institutions, usually in the state legislatures, it won't matter. So we have to play the game on the battlefield that laid, they've laid out. We have to start playing the game aggressively like they always do. And if we don't do that, it won't matter. You could have whoever, the greatest candidate in the world, the greatest policies in the world, and a guy like John Fetterman would be able to beat them. <laughs> you know, it, hey, guys, I'm the one that's willing to say this stuff because someone has to, because it's insane what's actually going on, right? And when I said, like, I don't know, it's sort of weird that Pennsylvania managed to elect a vegetable, <laughs> they criticized me as being ableist. I didn't know what that was, but there's always an ist, right? There's, a, there's always an ist, and it doesn't matter what you're talking about. And apparently an ableist is someone who discriminates against those with disabilities. I said, well, I'm not discriminating against an ableist. I'd love for John Fetterman to have like, good gainful employment. Maybe he could be like a bad guy at like a grocery store. Or, but like, is it unreasonable for me to expect as a citizen of the United States of America to have a United States senator have basic cognitive function? Like, well, you make a solid point, sir. Why should a United States senator be held to a different standard than the president of the United States himself? So we have to fix all of that, right? But again, we can't fix it until we play the game their way. The other way we have to start doing that, folks, is we have to start voting with our wallets, okay? The number one thing that we can do to make sure that our values exist into the future is fueling the patriot economy. Uh, just this week, I mean, this wasn't even going to be my speech until yesterday, uh, I started a news app with my friend Taylor Butterwich because I got sick of, you know, perhaps me because I'm so immersed in this stuff, you know, I knew about the Hunter Biden story, but no one else did. 
It was in the New York Post, which is like the second oldest newspaper in America, but big tech made sure no one else ever saw that article. We now know that like 17% of Democrats wouldn't have voted for Joe Biden had they heard of this. So under the auspices of build your own, right? We've been always told build your own. Now we try to build our own and then Amazon Web Services throws you off. Or Apple won't let you on the App Store. Or Google does the same. You know, they say build your own, but they don't really mean it, right? They're not like, oh, you just do your own. Like, we're gonna put up every roadblock possible to make that happen, but we took the advice and we built our own. We created an app that simply aggregates news, MXM news, like minute by minute. We take articles from the left, articles from the right. I mean, I looked yesterday, we had stuff from like Mediaite on there, like not exactly what we'd call conservative material. And Taylor, while operating the business, goes to check our account balance and finds out that we have zero in our operating account. There was about $750,000 in there the day before. Calls the bank, he calls me, he's like, hey, we have a problem. I'm like, yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> like, that's not good. <laughs> calls the bank, finds out, oh, oh yeah, um, you'll, you'll get a cashier's check in a day or two. Go, what? Like, what do you mean? Yeah, we closed out your account. I was like, wait, PNC Bank. Okay, PN, like, th yeah. Like, this isn't like, and by the way, it's not like we're creating news. You know, like if I was talking about the Wuhan lab leak story as the most obvious thing in the world for the last two years, which I've been doing, like, I'm not even creating that. But because I'll show you the New York Times alongside of Breitbart and let you make up your own mind, that still to them is apparently an offense. Think about that. PNC Bank, a major national bank, but we've seen it all, right? I had Chase cancel something to do credit card processing, I think it was for something I was speaking because I was speaking at an evangelical event. Now, we understand based on the testimony of Chris Ray the other day that apparently like practicing Catholics are domestic terrorists. Just like concerned mothers not wanting their children to be indoctrinated with critical race theory, not wanting their children to be pressured into permanent life-altering sex chain surgeries by their rainbow-haired teacher without parental involvement or consent. You know, those aren't people to worry about, but practicing Catholics, concerned mothers, those are the real threats, you know? Remember the guys that always commit the crimes? Like, yeah, they were on our radar. Yeah, they were on your radar, but you were too busy monitoring someone's grandmother who was within 500 miles of January 6th in D.C. You know, not doing their actual job, but this is the FBI. You'd think, no way, they're above reproach, but the FBI is doing it. We've seen the DOJ. We've seen the treatment of the January 6 prisoners. We're now watching our banks do this to us. Guys, we gotta fight back. I've said it on this probably stage last year. It's like, they could take out the most powerful man in the world, the President of the United States, like they did to my father. Because if you have one guy going out there by himself, all the slings, all the arrows can be put on that person. They cannot do it to us if there's 175 million Americans willing to stand up for themselves, for decency, for our values. I mean, think about what we're up against. A major, a major US bank was able to cancel, and just canceled, our ability to do banking. We didn't even get a call. It was like getting broken up with by text. <laughs> like, you know, no reason, it didn't matter what, you know, hey, you're letting people, it wasn't, again, we're not even creating news, we're aggregating it. Check out MXM, you'll actually see both sides of story and you can formulate your opinion. And I'm so confident that we're right on our side that I'm willing to actually let you see the leftist viewpoint because you will realize that they are insane. Why aren't they willing to show our side? Because they too realize that they're insane. <laughs> right, so, so what we have to do is we have to be involved in this. It's, it's sort of amazing. I think Michael Seifert's here somewhere from Public Square. Yeah. Another one. Woo! Great guys. San Diego-based company, he was sitting there at home, he was sick of going to a coffee shop that was taking his hard-earned dollars and giving it to leftist radical causes that would throw any one of us in the gulags, with or without cost, right? Just, they would do it just because of what we believe. 
So he created a list of the conservative companies that shared his values, he turned it into a website, and now Public Square has gone national. They're actually going public. But we have an obligation if we want to exist to support those kind of businesses. You're gonna search it anyway, right? You're gonna go on Google and find out what's the restaurant. I did it last night, okay? I had a table of 20, I called at eight o'clock, say, hey, we need a reservation. We got on Public Square, we found a restaurant that signed up, because I know I could go there and not get booed, even in DC. <laughs> I won't mention the restaurant because they'll probably get canceled if I do, but it was sort of nice for me. We walk in, we're with Carrie Lake, and we're with Matt Gates and Nigel Farage. Like, it was a pretty, conservative crew, that would have had a hard time probably eating in DC without getting yelled at. Now I do well with that, but it's fine. But sometimes you wanna just avoid it. And so we were able to find that. We have an obligation to get out there and support those kind of businesses. Because again, once we show the other side that there is pain in their wallets, I have to say that, because someone will aggregate that and say that I was advocating for violence. No, but they can cancel us at any second. I mean, imagine being a guy at a bank being like, you know what, I'm just gonna cancel Don Jr.'s news app. What's, what could happen? And I have a platform of like 10 million people on Twitter, millions on Truth, millions on Facebook and Instagram. Like, I have the ability to fight back. And I did, and I put it out there, and I put a tweet, and we had some pretty powerful people jump in on this, like the Speaker of the House. I would not have wanted to be PNC's bank comms guy last night. That was probably a long evening. But again, they probably knew at least some of that was capable and they still don't care, right? This morning, right as I was getting on stage, we, uh, it was a mistake. Upon further review, <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> okay. It wasn't a mistake. Okay. Have you ever noticed? Have you ever noticed the mistakes only go one way? You know, so, so go check out Public Square. Check out MXM. Support those businesses that support your values. Put their kids through soccer camp and soccer practice rather than funding, you know, what is it, 10-month uh, abortions. You know, some of the insanity that we see on the other side. Again, you have a choice. Exercise it. You know the other side is. They're willing to do it, they don't even care anymore. Right, look at this. Another perfect example. Glenn Story right here from Patriot Mobile. Yeah, yeah. I promise you folks, raise your hand if you don't have a phone. <laughs> well, I, I gotta keep my phone away because I know like I'm on every FBI list imaginable so I just gotta keep it away because like they're gonna drone me one day. Like, it, you all have a phone. You all are going to use it. Well, you can give your money to AT&T, who has in the last month tried canceling Newsmax, who the month prior to that took off OAN out of millions of homes. They're at, the parent company is actively attacking conservative mindset. Again, nothing extreme, it's Newsmax and OAN. It's just the stuff that we all believe. That's extreme, we can't let them even have an opinion. We can't let them have a voice. So if you're gonna have a phone, you can give your money to AT&T and watch it get weaponized against everything that you believe, or you can go to Patriot Mobile. Like, it's that simple. But we have to start thinking this way, folks, because if we don't, it's over. It's not just about the political landscape. We discussed ballot harvesting again, that's number one. Right? There's a reason you can win house seats because that's so localized, but you can't win the national because you can't go to California. There are people in Pennsylvania, I guarantee you, that have no idea who was even running for the United States Senate that voted. <laughs> no, it's true, like, of course. Because you could not listen. If you listen for five seconds to anything John Fetterman, you said, okay, he's clearly unfit for office. It's, it's like, that's not like, you don't have to be a doctor to be like, maybe there's something wrong. The Democrats knew he had these issues and they ran him anyway. By the way, they had someone who I probably don't agree with on anything, but was like at least like able to function, maybe not quite as radical, Connor Lamb. They could have ran him, but they knew even in the primary that this guy had these issues and they ran him anyway because they want a radical extremist that wants to release murderers. And this is the party of the left today, right? There are still incredible, great, moderate Democrats in America, but they have no one representing them. 
because you can't win if you don't espouse the lunacy of the left today. You can't get the California, New York, Soros money, whatever it may be, and win. You see the prosecutor just this week who misgendered a biological male in San Francisco, I guess it was, and Soros funded George Gascon, punished this prosecutor for misgendering a child rapist. The child rapist doesn't really need the punishment. The prosecutor who misgendered him is the one that needs to be taught a lesson. That is America under Joe Biden. That is America under Democrats. That is an America that none of us recognize, and it's an America that's gonna stay that way if we don't fight back and say enough is enough. So guys, that's our message, right? We need a president that is not owned by other people, right? There's a reason the billionaire class, even the billionaire conservative news class, wants someone other than Trump. It's because they want someone that needs them to take their call. You know, there's a lot of the billionaire class, even on the Republican side, it's like, yeah, we're really hard on China, but like, don't be that hard. Don't, like we still want our widget for a quarter cent cheaper and we'll destroy the American middle class to do so. Make no mistake, okay? I want the guy that doesn't need to take that call, that isn't entirely beholden to them, that is showing up to speak to the people, not showing up to speak to those who would rather go much softer on China we didn't need this job to begin with. My father certainly didn't. It was a lot easier to shut the hell up from me and be a real estate developer from New York. Unfortunately for the Democrats and many rhinos, and, ma and many, that is not our style. So guys, don't forget to vote in the CPAC poll, but most importantly right now, vote with your wallets. Support those who are supporting you. Help them engage in the battle for our future and for our very existence. Because if you don't think that it's on the table, you have not been watching. Thank you very much, CPAC. You are the best. Thank you.